good afternoon so in the last class i was doing the design of fixed portal frame okay so let me continue with the topic so as usual let me brush up for one minute what are all the things that i have done in the previous session okay so whenever i say portal frame so it is the footing column and beam these three parts combinedly it is called as the portal frame but whenever we want to design a portal frame we need to consider what is the load that is coming from the slab so that's why what i did in the last class first i took the design of one way continuous slab and i have completed it i think i have not completed it still there is one more portion okay so it was the design of one way continuous slab in that i have calculated the loads i have calculated the bending moments i have calculated the area of main steel area of distribution steel okay so as it is a slab i need to calculate the check for deflection that part i have not done it so now i will be taking up the check for deflection so now let me move on with the check for deflection so next heading it is check for deflection i think you people know that so from page 37 of is 456 from page 37 of is 456 they have given l by d max for a continuous beam or slab okay is 26 into we need to multiply the modification factors f1 f2 and f3 okay so now please remember for l by d max in page 37 of is 456 for a continuous beam or slab they have mentioned what should be the value for continuous slab so it is 26 into modification factors we need to multiply i think all these things you people have studied it in the design of rc structural element in the fifth semester okay so now what i will be doing is first i need to calculate f1 so to find to find f1 okay so for that i will be going with the IS four five six. I will be going with the IS four five six. Okay, so it's page thirty eight. Okay, so from page thirty eight, from page thirty eight of IS four five six. Okay, directly they have given a formula that is, if I want to calculate the F one, first we need to calculate F S. So what is that FS? So FS is given by 0.58 times FY into area of steel required divided by area of steel provided. Area of steel provided. So please remember, if I want to calculate F1. that is the modification factor so first i need to calculate the value of fs fy i already know it is the grade of steel it is fe415 so ast required and ast provided both i want already i have calculated that so but i have calculated the mid span steel and i have calculated the support span steel but which particular area of steel i need to consider here observe here as it is check for deflection so consider a slab at the ends the slab will be supported so don't you think that the deflection is maximum at the mid span so that's why you need to consider the mid span area of steel because deflection will be maximum at the mid span so therefore you need to consider the mid span area of steel so now what i will be doing is so let me substitute the values 0.58 into fy is 415 area of steel required already we have calculated so just we'll go back to the area of mid span steel in that what is the area required and what is the ast provided what is the ast required and ast provided that will directly take from that so ast required it was 397 and what is the ast that we have provided it's 413.37 
So after solving this, the value of Fs that we are getting here is, so it's 231.16, it's 231.16, okay. So next, so from the diagram, so page 38 of IS 456, uh, figure 4. Okay, page 38 of IS 456, figure 4, we are having a diagram. Okay, so I will be zooming this particular diagram now. Okay, just concentrate on this diagram. You will understand this. So just concentrate on this. So in the vertical direction, it is the modification factor. This is the value that we are in need of. Okay, so now I have calculated the value of Fs. Now I have calculated the value of Fs. It's 231 point something. Approximately, let me make it as 240. Okay. So we are having that 240 line. That is the curve we are having. But the thing is, to touch that particular curve, I want the percentage tensile reinforcement at the bottom. We want the percentage tensile reinforcement. Okay. So that's why what I will be doing first, let me calculate the percentage tensile reinforcement. What is the formula to calculate the percentage tensile reinforcement? So it is 100 AST by BD. If I calculate, you will get some value. So then the tensile percentage you will be knowing. Just extend that particular line and it should touch 240 FS. So next, take left and whatever the value that you will get, you need to take from this. Okay. So that I will be calculating it now. Okay. Done. So now first, I want to calculate the percentage tensile reinforcement that is PT tensile reinforcement okay so pt is given by 100 ast by b into d 100 ast by b into d so 100 ast that we have provided is 1413.37 okay divided by breadth as it is a slab it should be 1000 into so what is the effective depth it's 125. Overall depth is 150. Effective depth is 125. After solving this, the PT, percentage of steel that we are getting is 0.33. So just few seconds back, I was showing some diagram, right? So in the horizontal direction, you need to concentrate on this 0.33, okay? And you need to touch that FS. So it's 231.16. Approximately, I need to move on with 240 graph. So 240 FS I need to go with. So whenever we touch it and move towards left, we will get the modification factor. The modification factor that we are getting from figure 5, figure 4 of page 38, IS 456. So F1 value is equal to, so it's 1.5. It's 1.5. Okay, so we have calculated F1. Now, F2 value. So same thing. So in page 38 only, sorry, page 39. So page 39. Okay, so page 39 figure 5, what it says? Modification factor for compression reinforcement. Modification factor for compression reinforcement. But as it is a slab, we provide only in the tensions. So in the compression zone, we will not be providing any reinforcement. So F2 will be zero, no compression reinforcement, no compression reinforcement therefore F2 is equal to one. You should not multiply it with zero, sorry. It should be one. Next, what about F3? The same thing. So page 39, this is figure 5, IS456. So this is also same thing, page 39, figure 6, IS456. Let me confirm this, whether the figure names are correct. Yes. Okay. So the figure uh, 6 says that if it is a planged section, so ours is the slab, it's not a planned section. So F3 is also equal to 1. So substituting all these things, so what will happen? 
so where it is uh, here observe therefore l by d max so l by d max is equal to 26 into f1 is 1.5 into f2 is 1 f3 is 1 so finally the value for this is 39 i guess yes it's 39 So this is the value suggested by the code, please remember, this is the value suggested by the code due to the load that we are applying. So what is the deflection it is taking place? So observe here, L by D that we have provided. So what is the span of the slab that we have taken? So the span of the slab that we have taken is 4 meter. So the span that we have taken is 4 meter, that is 4000 mm divided by what is the effective depth that we have provided? 125. So the value that we are getting is 32.5. The value that we are getting is 32.5. Let me compare. So what is the L by D that we have provided? So based on our dimension, so what is the deflection that we are expecting? It's 32.5 code suggests that it can go up to a maximum deflection of 39. So now this value whatever we have provided is having lesser deformation when compared to the code suggestion. So hence safe. So hence safe. Okay. So now we'll go with the next thing. So this completes the design of slab. This completes the design of slab. Observe here. So as it is a slab, I was in need of spacing. If I want to calculate spacing, the area of steel. If I want the area of steel, it is the bending moment. If I want the bending moment, it is the load calculation. If I want the load calculation, dimensions. So all these things we have completed. So now I need to move on with the design of beams because from the slab, so the load get transferred to the beam. So I need to take up the design of beams. So before taking up the design of beams, so what are all the load that is coming on the beam from the slab and what is the bending moment? All those things we'll calculate it now. So we'll take up now. Next heading, I will be rubbing this. So next heading, now we are entering into the portal frame design. Observe here, now we are entering into the portal frame design. Slab will not be included in the portal frame, but if I want to analyze or design a portal frame, slab is must because I need to take the load from the slab. So now what I will be doing is, next it is the analysis of portal frame. I think it is the third step, I guess. First it was the data part, I guess. Just a minute. Yes, it was the data part. Second step, it is the uh, one-way continuous slab. Third step, it is the analysis of portal frame analysis of portal frame. It means that what are all the load that is coming, all those things will calculate it now. So analysis of portal frame. What do you mean by the analysis and what do you mean by the design? Analyze means what are all the load that is coming on the structure. Based on the load, what is the bending moment and all. If we calculate only this much and if we calculate what is the breadth, the depth, all these things, these are called as the analysis. Design means how many number of bars, how, what is the spacing of the bars and all those things. So that is nothing but the design. Okay. So now I will be doing the analysis part. So first I will be concentrating on the beam. Let me assume the breadth of the beam. Okay. I will be calling it as BW, breadth of the web. I think you people know that. Observe here. This was the slab, yes or no? And the total span was 20 meter. And at 4, 4 meter span, 8, 12, 16 and 20. At 4, 4 meter span, we were having the beam. Yes or no? All this were 4, 4 meter. I think this was 8 meter, I guess. The total is 20 meter. Now what I will be doing is, please remember one thing. 
So whenever it is a continuous, it acts like a T-beam. The slab along with the beam, monolithically casted beam, it acts as a T-beam. So what I will be doing is, that's why I will be taking, I want the dimensions, right? To design it as a beam. So I want the breadth of the beam. I want the overall depth of the beam, all those things. So first, let me assume the breadth of the beam. Okay, either you go with 9 inches, that is 230 mm or 1 feet, 300 mm. For time being, I will be going with 300 mm. But practically speaking, we always go with 9 inches because the thickness of the wall will also be 9 inches. So usually we go with 9 inches. But here, to be on a safer side, I am going to 300 mm. So I will be assuming breadth of the beam as 300 mm. So it's an assumption. Next, I need to go with the depth. So overall depth D, usually it is 1 12th to 1 15th of span. We need to consider. 1 12th to 1 15th of the span we need to consider. Okay, so what is the span? What is the span of the beam? Observe here. So don't go with this shorter beams. Go with this longer beams. So 8 meter is the span. But please remember, so whenever I considered the slab span, so the load was getting transferred in this direction, therefore the span of the slab, I have taken it as 4 meter, but here the longer side of the beam I need to take. So the longer side is 8 meter. So 1 12th to 1 15th of the span, I will be going with 1 15th. Okay, if you go with 1 12th also, no problem. Okay, 1 15th of the span. So it is approximately 533.33. Can I approximate it to 550 mm? And remember one more thing. Usually, so 450 mm depth, 300 mm depth or 600 mm depth. That would be sufficient for a normal building. Not more than that. 600 also very rare case for a normal building. For a higher building and heavy load coming building, usually we go with higher value. But here, so 550 that is more than sufficient. That's why I didn't go with 12. If I had gone with 12, so I would have got more value but this is sufficient. Okay. So now let me go with the column dimensions. So beam dimensions I have assumed. So what is the width of the beam? What is the depth of the beam I have assumed? Let me go with the columns column dimension also I will be assuming okay so now whatever the width of the beam is there okay observe here whatever the width of the beam is there so that beam needs to go and connect with the column yes or no so that's why I will be assuming the width of the column as the width of the beam so width of the column I will be assuming it as the width of the beam so column width is equal to column width is equal to beam width. Which is nothing but equal to 300 mm. And one more thing, there is nothing mandatory that you need to go with 1 12th or 1 15th of the span or something like that. You assume some value more than the breadth. The depth should be always more than or equal to that particular width. Yes or no? So that's why take some value. But if it comes unsafe, you need to redesign it. But in the examination, you people will not be having so much of time to do all those things. But practically speaking, yes, economic and safe it should be. But in the examination point of view, let us assume a higher value so that let us be safe. There should not be anything that I need to redesign. Okay, so now, so column width is 300. So depth of the, depth of the column. Depth of column, let us take it as 1.5 times B or 1.2 times B. Let me go with a higher value. It's 1.5 times the breadth. It's 450 mm. So I got the depth of the column, width of the column, depth of the beam, width of the beam. Everything I came to know. So now what I will be doing is, Observe here, I will be going with, 
under the analysis of portal frame itself now i will be going with moment of inertia calculation moment of inertia calculation so what is that here we are having two structural component so one is the beam and one more is the column as the dimensions are different okay so the moment of inertia that is what do you mean by moment of inertia the bending that is takes place due to the inertial force of a body okay due to its inertial weight so what is the bending so that i will be calculating so first let me go with the beam so what is the what is the shape of the beam it's a rectangle so it is bd cube by 12 yes or no so it's b d cube by 12 so what is the breadth of the beam 300 so what is the depth of the beam so it's 550 so here only i have yes here so it's 550 cube divided by 12 so the value that we are getting here is so it's 4.15 into 10 power 9 4.15 into 10 power 9 you know the unit of moment of inertia is mm to the power of 4 similarly let me calculate it for the beam sorry for the column same thing bd cube by 12 so breadth it is 300 depth it is 450 cube by 12 okay so what is the value that we are getting here so it's 2.27 it's 2.27 into 10 power 9 mm to the power of 4 so both are having different values so what i will be doing is so i beam by i column so i beam value is 4.15 into 10 power 9 divided by 2.27 into 10 power 9 so finally what is the value that i will be getting for this so the value that i will be getting is 1.83 1.83 so can i call it now as i beam moment of inertia of the beam is nothing but equal to 1.83 times the moment of inertia of the column i think while doing the structural analysis that is stand one and stand two you people might have seen for a portal frame so for the column if they have provided i for the beam they would have provided two i so that i am calculating it here i think you people remember so whenever they give a portal frame so here they were they were mentioning i and here for the beam they were mentioning two i and all so this is how we need to calculate it okay so now i will be moving on with the design of beams so as it is an analysis of portal frame so portal frame means beams columns and footing so first i will be taking up the beams so let me rub all these things now i will be moving on with the beams so concentrate here so as the name itself indicate beams as it is a beam finally i need to calculate the number of bars yes or no if if i want to calculate the number of bars i should know what is the area of steel if I want to calculate the area of steel, I need to know what is the bending moment that is coming on the structure. If I want to know the bending moment, what is the load that is coming on the structure? If I want to calculate the load, dimensions, dimensions I have already assumed it. Okay, so now I need to start calculating the bending moment. If I want bending moment, I want the load. So now let me take up the load that is coming. So first on the beam, so slab load needs to come so slab needs to take up the load and it should transfer that load to the uh, beam so load from slab i need to take load from slab so what are all the load from slab so please remember 
while doing the design of slab i have calculated the live load separately and dead load separately but while designing the beam i need to combine those two loads so what were the load so it was dead load and live load both i need to combinedly take it now so what was the dead load it was 7.125 kilo newton per meter square be careful with the unit plus what was the live load it was 4.5 kilo newton per meter square so when i add these two so approximately it is 11.625 kilo newton per meter square because i have taken it from the slab loading so per meter square there it acts but now it's a beam i need to convert that into udl because throughout the beam i want that particular load to be distributed as yes on no? observe here whatever the load that is coming from the slab be careful so that load needs to be distributed onto this particular beam as yes on no and don't you think that the slab is provided for the entire span and the load is getting transferred from the slab to the beam so therefore that load needs to be act as a udl how to convert this kilo newton per meter square into udl observe here i want everyone to concentrate if i consider this particular beam what will happen observe half of the span of this particular slab load and half of the span of this particular slab load will exert onto this beam if i take this beam that doesn't work because which is the critical i need to take that so what sir what do you mean by that observe here if i take this particular beam so what will happen half of the slab load will get transferred onto this half of the slab load will get transferred onto this so if i consider this particular beam only half of the slab load get transferred but if i consider the interior beam what will happen half of the slab load from this span half of the uh, slab load from this span so totally one particular span what is that particular span it's 4 meter so please remember if i want to consider you need to consider the interior beam which is critical okay so so half of this plus half of this it is nothing but one particular span so 4 meter so what i will be doing is this 11.625 kilo newton per meter square into spacing of beams i need to multiply be careful so what is the spacing so it's 4 meter so meter meter get cancel you will be left out with kilo newton per meter that is in the udl form so the value is 46. 5 kilo newton per meter instead of calling it as spacing i will be calling it as beam spacing so kilo newton per meter so this is the load from the slab okay next don't you think that the self weight of the beam should also be considered please remember don't by heart anything now i am doing the design of beams so if i want to do the design of beams i want to know what is the load that is coming on the beam so whatever the load that is coming from the slab needs to be transferred to the beam so that i have taken <coughs> now i need to take what is the self load of that particular or self weight of that particular beam so self weight we can easily calculate it so how to calculate the dead load of beam dl dead load of beam its density into observe here so its density into breadth into depth as yes or no because i want this also to be in kilo newton per meter so breadth bw breadth i know bw into depth but one thing observe here if you consider overall depth what will happen don't you think that again you are considering this portion observe here what do you mean by overall depth of the beam overall depth means this one this entire span is nothing but the overall depth of the beam but while doing the slab already you have considered this thickness so don't consider the overall depth what will happen if you consider it will be safe but it will be uneconomical so that's why what i will be doing is let me deduct this portion what is this particular value it's 150 mm as yes or no already we have calculated this is a slab portion it's 150 mm so total depth i know it's 550 
So I will be taking only this portion. But remember, beam is not only this portion. This entire portion is beam. But already this portion we have already considered while doing the slab. So that's why I will be considering only this portion while calculating the dead load of the beam. So breadth into only I will be concentrating on the effective depth. So density of concrete, it's 25 kilonewton per meter cube. Into breadth is 300 mm or 0.3 meter. Effective depth, so observe here. So just deduct 150 mm, then so it's 550 minus 150 or 0.55 minus 0.15. Please consider this. So finally, what is the value that you people are left out with? So it's 3 kilonewton per meter. It's 3 kilonewton per meter. Observe here. Whatever this load, 7.125 and 4.5, already it has been multiplied with 1.5 while doing the load for slabs. But here it has not been multiplied. So ultimate dead load is equal to ultimate dead load is equal to 1.5 into 3 that is 4.5 kilonewton per meter. It's 4.5 kilonewton per meter. Now, what is the total load that is coming on the beam? So, total load on beam. It is nothing but load from slab. So, it's 46.5 plus the dead load of beam, 4.5. So, it's 51 kilonewton per meter. So, this is about the load calculation. Now, to continue further with the design, I need to know. I have calculated the load. Now, I need to calculate the bending moment. So, so the bending moment part and all, I will be doing it in the next class. So, for time being, we will wind up. Thank you.